Get us. How are we, mate? Um, welcome to In The Box. Uh, thanks for coming on. Uh, how's things, first of all, mate? How's things? No, it's all good, mate. Um, life's a bit different at the minute, but it's a, it's a, hopefully it ain't too long and we can be out and, out and about and playing football like we love. Exactly, mate. I suppose everyone's in the same boat. Yeah, I was going to ask you, as um, as life indoors with the kids, they driving you mad yet or they've been uh, well behaved? No, they've been good as gold, mate. It's only been a week. Um, the little one's a bit, bit mad. She's only two, isn't she? But yeah, um, when she, you don't sleep constantly with her, so um, looking after her twenty four seven. Yeah. So yeah, the two boys, the older ones, they they just got their own thing, mate. They go and play football, or they play computer. Don't really see them. No. Oh, that's good then. Sounds like you're, um, you know, they're not uh, causing too much ag uh, indoors then. Right. Uh, Let's get down to it then, mate. Um, before we go through your team, just wanted to get... I know you found it tough. I know you uh, texted me back and forth. It wasn't an easy uh, easy selection process for you. No. Um, what what was your thinking behind it? Have you gone in there with like your manager's head on? I've, I've asked this to a few of the uh, guests I've had on so far. Have you gone in with your manager's head on? Or have you just gone like, let's get as many star names in there as we, as we possibly can? No, I've gone, I've gone by doing it by the time-wise I've played with people. Mm -hmm. Because um, and what they've done for me or like for the team, for when I was playing with them at the time, like yeah, how good cool. they were and how much effective they were for the team. Yeah. So I've gone that way. I said a manager's head, um, and obviously some of them have gone on to better careers as well, haven't they? So it's just goes by by things like that, really. Like I knew they were good players, a couple of them, and obviously two of them are playing in the Premiership, so. Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's the reason why I've gone that way. Perfect, mate. Sounds good. Right, we will get started then. We'll start in between the sticks. Who's in goal for your team? Paolo Gazaniga. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone. I've gone with Paolo. Obviously, like I said in the other bit, he's um, he's more his distribution. I've never seen nothing like it. He yeah. could go left foot, right foot. Even like you played with him, didn't you? So yeah, you you can tell you know what he was capable of and some of the saves he made and yeah, these distributions go left foot and right foot out of his hands yeah. and hit people perfect it was frightening yeah. and I think the first the half a year he was with us he got like four assists as well <laughs> I think, and I think he's got a couple for Tottenham since yeah. he's been there as well isn't he so yeah he, he's got that he's got that in his locker and, and he's a great lad and obviously yeah. like looking after him as well myself I've got a closer relationship with him and when he first came over from Spain and Valencia, he had no one over here and it was it was nice. It was nice to take him on board, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and I think he was glad that he got rid of me in the end. <laughs> yeah, no, I was going to say, like I say, you know, obviously I know him well myself as well and I was there when he first came along and, you know, like I think me and you spoke about it quite a lot when I, you know, when he came along, you're like, where has this kid come from, wasn't it? It was just, it was, yeah, it was mad. It was, mad. <laughs> it was mental, like. And he, he only got, Essie S went over, didn't he, to Spain and watched a, it's like an in-house game, wasn't it? Yeah. Like an ID game or something. And he spotted him there to get him in as a number two. And then, yeah, when he, that first, that first training session, I was like, wow, who's this kid? <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought as well, thinking, Ross, you ain't going to be in here long. <laughs> that's the thing as well for me I'm pretty sure like we went on a golf day and like I'm pretty sure like a few, I think a few of the staff were like I'm an R about him weren't they and me and you were like you're joking mate oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely yeah. unbelievable it was like I couldn't believe it and he got his chance didn't he Bournemouth away mm. in the FA Cup and yeah. he at the first goal he had a stinker oh, yeah. he went to catch it and dropped it from a rip didn't he yeah 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 and then from, from then onwards he just like went like boom didn't he so yeah maybe that mistake livened him up but he was a good lad as well when he was funny he was a funny lad class, mate. Yeah, he was a character wasn't he as well that was the thing um, good character yeah and like i say just it's great to see him now um you know playing at the highest level and you know it's not it's not a surprise to me and you uh there so no no problem yeah. there's going to be a few boys in this team that uh obviously i know as well so we'll move on uh we'll start with your back form we'll start right back another lad i know well Barry Fuller. Barry Fuller, he's in. Barry Fuller. Still going strong. 
for his age. I've, I've never seen someone play at right back like he does. It reminds me of like Carl Walker. Like, you know his energy up and down. Yeah. He's just up and down constantly. And 1v1s, I've never seen anyone better Yeah, when I played with him. Um, and when when Martin Allen got rid of him, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I was thinking, what are you doing? But um, obviously, he's gone on to Wimbledon. He's got another promotion. He's a good leader as well. Like, it was good to be in the change room, wasn't he? Chuck yeah. and obviously you with him as well. Like, great lad. Great to be around. He's um yeah, he's a, he's an energy and he's one v one. That's the reason why I put Barry. I have not seen a better right back who I played with in a one 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 v one situation than Baz. Nah, definitely. I think um you know, I've had he's already made a, uh, another one of my teams uh, since I've been doing this and it's not been long. So nah for me as well, like I say, he deserves everything he gets. He's a ultimate pro and like I say, everyone mentions the fact that in one v one situations, he's you know he's all, almost impossible yeah, he's awesome. to be fair. So no, that's good. Nice solid right back in there for you. We'll go to the other full back. Who have you gone for? Danny Jackman, little Danny Jackman. Jacko. All, all, all five foot one of him. All five foot one of him. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't believe how small he was when I first met him. I walked in, I was thinking, good God, this kid's a bit small, isn't he? <laughs> but, mate, I looked at what a player though. Oh, what, what a player. Great player. Mate, he used to do things like passing, like when he used to get down the wing. Cause he, and he used to do things that I used to be like, good God, what a delivery he had, mate. Unbelievable. Such a great left foot. And he's, he scored one of the best goals I've seen at Gillingham as well. I think well, it was against six. And he absolutely, yeah. it was about 35 yards, just okay. come onto it and zinged it, top pins. But yeah, he's, a, he's he was another one. He, he, he was just more his... Um, his final ball was like frightening. There's, it was obviously better players I played with yeah. in 1v1 situations, a bit like Baz. Yeah. But um, it was just his final delivery. He never gave the ball away, really. I've never really seen him give the ball away. It was like, and it was a shame that I didn't play for him longer. Like, obviously, he went back home and he up, up in Worcester. Yeah. And then um, didn't really see him. But he, yeah, he was a great player, mate. He's just, just his. His ball retention on the ball and stuff like that was just frightening. Yeah, no, of course. No, and, he could, and he could play left wing, he could play centre mid. Yeah, versatile. Yeah, no, yeah, for me, good. for me, he was, yeah, um, like, fantastic player. Like, like I said, his left foot was just, you know, it was surprising how much power he got out of them little legs, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's great, mate. <laughs> little tree trunk, mate, his legs. But, uh, no, mate, no arguments there. Different class. And, uh, yeah, you slotted him in at left back there. Right, now, moving on. The two centre-halves. Um, two Gillingham players that I, I, didn't, I didn't play with. So, yeah, go on, tell us a little bit about them. And who's, who's first up? Uh, first up, I'll go with uh, John Egan. Okay. Um, I had a year and a bit with John. Um, he, he was different class, mate. And to be fair, for a centre-half, he ain't, he ain't big. He's quite, he's not, he's not the biggest. But he's, um, like I say, he can play out from the back. He's 1v1, he's heading, he can jump, he can leap, everything. And it, look, listen, it, this is the reason why he's playing for Sheffield United now in the Premiership, playing in week in, week out. Yeah. Um, and obviously playing for Republic of Ireland, international standards now. Um, he, yeah, he, when he come in, I was like, mate, he's a player, this kid. Yeah. He was only, he was only young and he had a bit of everything, mate. He could run out with a ball, he could pass, he could tackle, he was aggressive, he could head, yeah. like anything that you want to as a centre off. Yeah. Like yeah, like some centre offs you go with, didn't you? They just they're great at heading. Yeah. Good one by ones or they can't pass or but he just had everything. Yeah. And he still has got everything. And he's like I say, that's the reason why he's playing at the highest level you can. Of course, of course, mate. And what so like no surprise for you, because 'cause he'd have been young when he came in there, I would imagine, yeah? Yeah, he was he was quite young and um, I don't think he played straight away either. He come in, and then um, he got his chance, and, and I, he got man of the match that that, that first game. He come in, chilling him up. Uh, uh, was it against? I can't remember. It was against, but he, he come in. He got M O M, and then from then, mate, he was like unbelievable. Yeah, so like he had everything, absolute everything. Yeah, and yeah, like I say, playing at the highest level now. So good one to have yeah. in there, right alongside him. Who's going alongside him? Um, I've gone with Adam Barrett, and he and he would be my 
my skipper as well. He um, cool. obviously he's my captain at Chilean when we got promoted. Yeah. Uh, but just, just he, he's another one. You, know, you just love in the changing room. He's he was different class. He was a proper leader. Yeah. And that's the reason why I put Adam. He was like a proper leader. Like he, he'd always be an eight out of ten. Yeah. Always constantly like he'd throw his body on the line for the whole team. Yeah. And that's the reason why I put Adam in there. Like he's obviously that was like I said earlier about other people there's better ball players and stuff like that than what Adam but they didn't have the heart on his sleeve like he has or his determination and, he, and his leadership yeah and that's, that's it you've got, you got a nice bit of a balance there then with the two of them yeah yeah exactly so I've gone with that yeah and I suppose yeah. no, no, no surprise you, the, the way he was like you know you're saying he was a good pro and stuff it's no surprise to see him doing well with his coaching career now as well isn't it yeah obviously he's at Mill now isn't he coaching yeah um and always said he's he's going to be a manager one day, and he's going to be a top manager. Okay. Um, he's a very likable man as well. Yeah, like everyone likes him. There's not anyone that dislikes him. Yeah, he's just such a lovely geezer. And um, but it, you say that it was like he's he's such a lovely geezer off the pitch, but on the pitch he's an animal. <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah. It was completely two different people. It was, yeah. uh, it was it was good to watch. Good to watch. Uh, quality, mate. He's in. And I suppose, what was it like training up against him then? What was he like? Did you have a few battles in training? Yeah, he's, um, he, he was, he was all right. He was, <laughs> Adam trained, Adam trained how he played. Yeah. So like, he just throw the body in front of everything, like I say, like, one of them horrible people, like, any time you used to, people used to shoot and he'd be there, like, flying his body in the line and, yeah, like, as a forward in the south and you've got doing that I'll be like oh, for God's sake this geezer mate he needs to leave off but he just <laughs> don't stop and, in, and to be fair he was like 35, 36 37 like he was coming at the end of his career when I played with him so I don't yeah, know what he'd been like when he obviously he was younger and yeah. like, he's had a career hasn't he so yeah cool so yeah yeah, he, right. he was same, same old Adam on the pitch as what he was on the training pitch Perfect, right? He's in there, and he's and you've already named your captain there. Well, saved me a job of asking you a question. Uh, Dan, just quickly, was I say, if you, can you turn your phone around to so just so it's a bit wider for the screen? It'll look better on the uh, once we have a view. If you, if you there can. you go. There you go. That's a bit better, mate. See a bit more of you now. Right. Um, yeah. So we'll move on to your midfield, and I, I think by the look of it, you've gone for like a what four one three formation. Four one well, four one three two. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Then, who's who's going to be at the, uh, the base of that for you? So we've got in there, we've got Stephen Gregory. Yeah. Um, I played with him at Wimbledon the year we got promoted from the Conference of the Football League. Okay. Just his vision of passing from yeah. there and the spell of him, obviously, when he came to Gillingham as well. I yeah. got him from Bournemouth. Um, I was on his case a bit to get, because he was at Bournemouth at the time, in yeah. a champ. He wanted game time, so I got him, managed to get him down to uh, Gillingham the year we got promoted. Right. Yeah, just his vision of passing was frightening. He looked like eff effortless. He didn't. He just zing a ball like so close to his feet, and you think, how have you even got that there that far? Things yeah. like that. So he never had much legs. Yeah. But it's just his vision and like, but he protect the back four like I've I've not seen before. Like yeah. in the, every years up, they've been someone screening. He was probably one of the best I've seen at doing that and. Sometimes when you're under pressure and teams are on you a bit, yeah, it just calm it down. It just be like bang, get it, and it just calm everything down all the time. It yeah. just looked looked like he he couldn't not like he couldn't be bothered. Just look effortless. It just didn't just looked easy to him. Came easy you know I mean? to him. Yeah, came easy to him. Yeah, it come so easy to him. It just looked like you think he ain't even bothering, but he is. You know what <laughs> I mean? He was yeah. one. He was just one of them, and yeah, like I say. The best I've seen in who sits in front of the front four that I've seen. He obviously played there for Wimbledon and Gillingham with us. And obviously, we've got two promotions together. Yeah. In the season, so yeah, just, that's why I put him in there as well. Yeah, someone you He's played well, yeah. He retired very early. After that, he didn't go back playing football. He was only okay. like 28, 27, yeah. something. So he was young, and now he's doing his, um, he's got his own gym. Okay. Yes. So maybe it, what he was like on the pitch, where I say he couldn't look bothered, maybe it was. He just thought, 
I can't be bothered. <laughs> Yeah, he was course. such a good player, mate. He was such a good player. Really? Yeah. Like, he just put the edge on. I go, Greg, do you realise how good you are? And he's like, oh, yeah, I don't care. Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. That's what sort of person he is. Okay, laid so, back. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Because like, you must have played with some good, like, older, other older midfielders as well. Yeah, I played with some. Obviously, Andy Franklin, he, was, he sat in there. Yeah. Charlie Lee. Yeah. And he played there a few times. Uh, Lewis Montrose. Yeah, there's a there's a few few boys that have played there, but it was just the way it looks so easy for Greg's. Yeah, that, that's the reason why. Natural, and natural player. Nothing, yeah. ever, yeah, just nothing ever bothered him. Like he used to get you sometimes because, like I say, he never used to get around the pitch smashing people or yeah, you know, like like some people like, don't they? Running their yeah. nuts off. Yeah, him it just looks too easy. And, like I say, he didn't look bothered. Yeah, but, but nothing ever used to affect him. So he's just to get on with his game, and I don't think really, I don't think people realised how good he was. Yeah, until, yeah. Do you know, like he's one of them where until you play with him, actually yeah. on the pit, you realise how good he is. Okay. For your team, for your team. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No. Listen, there's loads of players like that, and it's not like say sometimes it's hard for the fans to appreciate him. But you know, as a fellow yeah. professional, when you play with them, <clears throat> you know, you realise yourself and. Yeah, like I say, I'm sure like right there as well. You said you, um, you know, you played a big part in him coming down to Gillingham. Like, did Scally give you a, like a little finder's fee for that? Then or not? Are you still waiting on that? No, every day. <laughs> <laughs> Two jobs at once, yeah, banging him in up top and, and 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 signing the players, recruiting. Yeah. <laughs> right. well, Martin Allen just wanted someone sitting there, and he and he asked me about Stephen Gregory. Yeah, Martin Allen did. So I just went, yeah, I'll get on the phone then. No, I, I don't know. He was going to go somewhere else up near where he lived on loan. Right. But I managed to get him. Managed to get him. Right, that's it. Looking after your, uh, your, your hometown club there. Right, who's in front of him? So, I'm going to go on the right side of the three. I'm going to go, because of his legs and up and down, I'm going to go Bradley Dack. Dacky, um, yeah. yeah. Like, Brad's he, he, the energy is just ridiculous. Yeah. The way he used to get around the pitch. So, that's why I put him like of the right of the three. So obviously wing backs get out. I know Daki will be out there. Um yeah. so he's yeah, Daki mate, listen, um, you play with him youth level. Yeah. Um and he the geezer's just things he used to do like with a ball or he's finishing. Like for a midfielder, for a finisher like he does. Yeah. It's like ridiculous, isn't it? Unbelievable, yeah, unbelievable. Like his cold ratio don't lie, does it? Do you know what I mean? No, and to be fair, when he first came in the scene, he never used to get really that many goals. No. But he used to get in a box so much, yeah. <laughs> like from midfield. No, I'd I, be like, I think, I think it's something that? that I think it's something that did come natural to him, but I think he had to like he had to sort of adapt at first before he got comfortable, yeah. wasn't it? I spoke to him about that yeah. before and like, he actually comes on the show, I've already fil- filmed him and you know, yeah, he's he, you know, he, he openly admits that, you know, it took a while for him to adapt to it. But yeah, like yeah. you said, there's. I think what goes unnoticed about uh, Daki is as well for me anyway. What you know, having played with him and having watched him, um, for me is that how unselfish he is. I know, I know he scores a lot of goals, but the work he gets for. I mean, I always I remember watching him coming through as a youngster. You know, and he, he is, it's almost like he bounces around the football pitch. Like, it's just yeah, the work he gets through is, is crazy. And, you know, everyone automatically just speaks about the goals that he gets, but for me, it's you know he's very he's an unselfish player and someone you want. In your team, isn't it? Oh yeah, hundred percent. And obviously, I played. I played with him at his younger age. Yeah. Like obviously, when he first came on the scene. Yeah. And you could just tell, like, how good he was. Yeah. And it, I knew you just knew he wasn't going to be at Chilling for long. Yeah. Knew he was going to go. Um. And and do you know what? I don't think he's finished yet. I think he's going to get another move. To be honest. No. Like, unfortunately, with his knee, it's like shit for him. Do you know what I mean? He's yeah. gutting for all the shit. I mean, we're all mates with him. And oh, yeah. Good lad. Like, we, we want the best for him, do you know what I mean? To get as yeah. high as he can. And, yeah. and I think he would have gone again. So, yeah. but look, listen, we know Dakin, like, obviously I've been watching it in Instagram and stuff and he's working hard to get back, and he? So, yeah. Um, to be fair, he might have had a bit of luck, mate, with all this going on. <laughs> so yeah, you know back. what? Like, like I said, obviously I spoke to him and he's come on here and, you know, to be honest, mate, it's... Um, it sounds, you know, it sounds like he's really got his head down with it, and 
yeah, I, I'm with you, mate. I, I think, you know, in, you know, you've got to look at it. It could be a blessing because people come back from that injury now. You know, it's not like back in the day before. People come back from them injuries. You know, I mentioned it to him when I spoke to him. You know, Callum Wilson, his had two, gone on to play for England. I think the way he's looking at it as well is use it as a positive. He might even get, he, you know, God forbid, he could even get stronger and better. And, you know, that'd be a uh, scary thought. And like you said, I'm, I'm with you. I, I see no reason why he can't go on to be a Premier League player, whether it's with Blackburn or, or you know, or elsewhere. But, no, listen, for me, listen, he's a, he's a great mate of ours, isn't he, uh, both of us. But, yeah, for me, I, I don't see no reason why he can't, uh, you know, move on to, to play in the top league for, uh, for sure, to be fair. And, uh, yeah, you know, he's someone that we, we clocked on to pretty early when we saw him at Gillingham. So, no, no yeah. problem with that. He's in there. He's in there. Who's, uh, who's next up? He's in there. So, I've gone uh, on the... Centre, I've gone Andy Drury, jukebox. He's in, no one mate of mine. <laughs> um, well, obviously, I've been playing jukebox now for the last four years now. Yeah. Um, like I said, mate, he, he, he's another one, like, he, he works so hard for the team, but he don't, don't, don't get recognised. Yeah. It's frightening, like, we watch, we obviously get all our, like, I'm obviously at Hamlet Mall with him now. And yeah. We get our like heart rate monitor tests and stuff come through, like how much we've run. And for thirty six year old, he's always in the top three, it's like 11 k and things. Unbelievable. So, but not just his work rate, but he's he's what he does with a ball and how he passes things that I, I have never seen. Mm. Like he's looking one way and he, he does this stupid pass, and I think. How have you even done that? He's that yeah. sort of player, and yeah, and he's always laughing. He's always joking. Do you know what I mean? He's like oh, a laid back one, laid back one. Yeah, he's just like he does things, or someone mess up, and he's not like one of them them people that are on your case all the time. Yeah, like do you know what I mean, we've all played with players that are just constantly just want to shout at you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, in midfield behind you, get hold of it, do this, do that. Yeah, he takes so much pressure off players. It's unbelievable. And yeah. I think he don't realise he's doing it. No. Do you know what I mean? He's just like, yeah. you mess up, mate, and he's just laughing in your face about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, mate. You, you, yeah. you'll, struggle to, you'll struggle to meet like, a more laid-back character, mate. Like, for me as well, like, like yeah. you said there, like, like you said there, when I, when I played with him at Luton, like, my mates would come watch me and they'd be like, oh, can he do some craft at Drury? Like, how good is he at pressing and stuff like that? And I'm like, mate, you don't realise like what a player he is. Like it's like for me as anyway, like having played with him, like I just love playing with him. Because I, I for me, I, I I used to see him play. And for me at times, like other people weren't on the same wavelength as him. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's he, you know, what what a player and uh nah listen, uh great lad as well, good mate of mine, used to drive in with him. Yeah, used to let me go to sleep on uh, on the way in, so I, I Absolute top man. <laughs> he ain't he changed, mate. He lets me do that as well. <laughs> nah, top stuff, mate. He and loves like, say, driving. Top, mate. What's that? I said, and he loves driving. He loves yeah, it. I know. I know, mate. I know. I know. I think he just likes being in control, mate. And he's just, like yeah. I say, he's so chill. But listen, he, he, I think he, you know, he must have, he played in the championship loads of times for Ipswich as well. And you, you could definitely tell that. Right. Yeah, he's, he's, he's just, he, go on. He's, he's ball, mate. He's just, he's balls he does, mate. He's just, and deliveries as well. Yeah, and just little touches like, in there. He, well. he's, like, he's like, like Danny Jackman, do you know what I mean? He never hardly gives the ball away. No. And no. he do that. Like, he put it through people's legs and all sorts, do you know what I mean? He's just so good to watch. Yeah, great player. Great, yeah, so good great guy. And he's, uh, he's agreed to come on, so he'll be coming on. He's just getting his team together now. Uh, right, who's next? Who completes the midfield? So I've gone left. This was an hard one, mate. It was team you and him. <laughs> um, but I've gone. I've gone with Westy. I've yeah. gone with Westy because of the reason why I played longer with him. Do you know what I mean? This is what I was yeah. saying in my in the earlier bit. Yeah. I've gone with players that obviously I only played with a few months before you got bought and went off yeah. to uh, Swindon, didn't you? So it was a uh, it was a shame, really, because I'd have liked to play a bit longer with you, but. Um, but yeah, like I say, I've just gone. I've gone with Westy. Like I say, I played a lot. I played obviously at Gillingham with him. I played at Ebbsfleet with him. Yeah. Um, but the main reason was that League, League Two season we won the promotion. Yeah. Um, he come in after five, six games, and, and he just 
just made our team. Yeah. He just made it like his legs and his direct. Yeah. Was so direct for us, the way we wanted to play. Yeah. Um, and he used to get down the byline, cross, do you know what I mean? Every time. I just knew what he was doing every time. Yeah. Um, and that's the reason why I got a lot of my goals, do you know what I mean? It's through him and, and he used to score goals and he's worked right back. Um, but yeah, like I say, he, he he just made our team, and that's the reason why he got in there. He just made that final bit of puzzle. Yeah, um, that final final piece of the jigsaw. No, honestly, yeah. he was for me like a hell of a player. You know, like old fashioned, really, in terms of like a real just old fashioned winger when he like you know just gets at people. And to be honest, as well, like he seems like he's been going forever. Because I remember like I come back from the states and I went, I come to watch one of your games. Uh, I think it was, was it Everton Bromley. You know, probably must be yeah. a couple of seasons back now and. He was uh, even that night. Like I actually sat with Bobby Bowery, my, my old agent, and I know he's looked after Miles for years as well. And he was the best player on the park that night. And that was that wasn't that long ago, you know. Yeah. And he, he's a bit, he's a bit older than me, and he seems to have gone on forever. And no, like, I, re- I remember that year as well. Uh, you're on about, and uh, nah, listen, hell of a player, like fantastic. Yeah. He just used to get up the pitch so quick. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. it's like the way Martin Allen wanted to play. It was like we play in their half. Yeah, and. Just got you up the pitch, like. Yeah, as soon as we were up there, mate, he used to get us up there. We'd be yeah. in the 80 yard box within seconds, you know what I mean? Because he used yeah. to get us up there. And, do you know what I mean? I didn't have to do that much running, and I was just yeah. down in the <laughs> last match. Oh, let's go, die. Just give it to him. I'll get in the box. <laughs> no, nah, yeah. listen, there's definitely yeah. more yeah. Than, him than, than you'd have got from me, mate. Anyway, so don't worry about that. <laughs> 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 right, we are going to move on to your front two. Now, this is going to be interesting because. Or well, it is interesting, I don't know, what should I say, because I've, I've got the names down. Because, you know, being a striker yourself, um, you're probably going to be fairly self-critical and you are self-critical and, you know, to put two forwards in there, they, they must have been pressure. So, um, go on, mate, you lead us off. Who, who, who makes your front two? So, I've gone, I've gone with these two, these two because I had my best, well, their best careers, I'd say, in their goal scoring. <laughs> uh, they, they, um, Johnny Main, obviously, when I was at Wimbledon with him, um, mm. they're both exactly the same, similar, really. Yeah. Like, I've not seen, like, they'd have two chances of their scoring, one of them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was just, they were just one of them players, like, in training. Yeah. Like, we'd be shooting practice and, like, they're finishing everything. Yeah. Yeah, because I was going to say, like, I, I, I don't, to be, to be honest, I thought he's a guy and a player, I don't really know a lot about John Mayne. I didn't really get to see a lot of him. Obviously, you said... Yeah. Well, he come on the scene oh, very he late. He at Wimbledon, didn't he? Yeah, he, he come on the scene very, very late. Um, yeah. He didn't start playing football until like 23 or 24 or something. Really, yeah. And then he went to Tunbridge and then Wimbledon bought him. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, he just scores goals, mate. He was just like... Dead. Like I say, my other foot forward, I'll just explain in a minute, like, we just had such a good partnership. Yeah. It was like anything I'll flick on or anything I'll t- they just knew where they they had to be. Like constantly, like I played with other forwards and you flick it on or you go you you're somewhere where they and they're just not never there. Do you know what I mean? They, yeah. Just, what are you doing over there or yeah. They just knew where to be every time. So it made me look like a good player as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They, yeah, cool. they used to make the runs off off of me like all the time and but like I say, like Johnny Main, he was such a good finisher and like his goal, his goal um, ratio, don't lie, do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. Just unfortunately, he got a bad in, um, in the year we got in the, got up in from the conference at Wimbledon. It's a shame yeah. for him, but um, yeah, he, was, he had a bad knee injury, he had to retire, so, but yeah, he's one of the best finishers I've seen. Cool, and like I say, complimented you well up there. Right, so who's, um, who, who's part of him and who, who's the other one who um, complimented you well? I've gone uh, Matty Godden. Okay. He's obviously at Conversby now. I played with him at uh, Ebbsfleet. Yeah. That, like I say, mate, it's the same same thing. Like, um, I think the year he went to Stevenage after Ebbsfleet, he got all Stevenage. Yeah. Um, but the year he got 28 goals, I think I got like 21 assists for him. <laughs> it was mental. It was a mental partnership. Did he give you any of his um, sign-on fee then? No, nah, I got nothing to do, mate. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, got absolute nothing off him. <laughs> uh, listen, and it, and look, and he's proven it now. Like he yeah. went to Peterborough, he scored loads of goals at the beginning of the season last year. Yeah, um, and then obviously 
Steve Evans didn't um, fancy him or left him. He yeah. didn't really play towards the end of last year. Yeah. Um, and then obviously he's gone to commentary and look, he's flying, mate. He's scoring That's every week. Fine. Yeah, see, I was going to ask about that because like, uh, I know Matty as well. Obviously, I played with him and yeah, like, terrific player. To be fair, probably an even better golfer, to be fair. But um, yeah. what I was going to say to you was like, you know, he's he's gone on to to, to do. He's obviously doing really well at the minute at, um, at Coventry. At I think he, he, he well, every time I've looked, he's scored this 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 season. So um, he must be up there near the top of the goal scoring charts. There. How far yeah. do you think he he, he he could go? Do you think he could um, move on from that? He can do. Yeah, definitely. If he gets a chance. Yeah. Look, listen, Matty. We know that he's a goal scorer. Yeah. But I mean, it, Matty. Matty's one of them players where. The amount of times when we used to play, yeah, and he would not be in a game at all. Same with John Main, really. They would yeah. not be in a game, but they would always pop up with a goal. And this, and you can't buy them people. You can't. You can't. You just can't. Like they're literally always there. They go one chance, they're going to score. That's yeah. that's their mentality, even in mindset. Yeah. Like I speak. Go, don't mind. I'll score. Yeah, just cutting out a bit there, Ken. That's you, they, they used to say it to you all the time. I told you. Yeah, yeah. So he, yeah, he's they're them sort of players, mate. That he, he's exactly the same. So he could definitely go up I mean, one higher championship. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Cool. Look out for that one. And what about if you had to pick one? Then if you can only start there one. Oh, room, room, room. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'll probably have to go John May, mate. You have to go with your old team, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I only had one season with Matty. Yeah, yeah. One good season, so Mainly I had three years with, so I'll go with Mainly and obviously we, that's my first proper good partnership I had with someone, so I'll go with Mainly. Perfect, mate. Right, that completes your 11. Uh, great side. A lot of balance to it, like you said, and yeah, some good top players there. Like I say, I, I, know, I know quite a lot of them uh, personally myself, and no, that's a good side. And uh, yeah, like I say, before I let you go, just going to fire some questions at you because I think I explained beforehand the reason why I'm doing this. One for boredom for all the fans and Gillingham, Wimbledon fans, Epsleet fans sitting at home and stuff like that. And also just for the, the, the youngsters, really, that young players who, yeah. who, who like tuning into things like this. You know, just speaking, hearing from someone like yourself who's been there and done it, to see if uh, we can get anything out. Yeah, little nuggets of advice for them. Um, so yeah, there'll be a couple of questions for that, and then a couple of fun ones as well. First question: We talked about the players there, and you know, your eleven aside team there that you've got out, your dream eleven. What about favorite, uh, like the best players you played against? Best players played against probably Sissoko. Okay. At Newcastle. Yeah. Um, we played him in the cup game, the league cup game at Gillingham, and yeah, he was he was different class, mate. What he was he an really, animal. Yeah? He was so there. Yeah, he was just stride past people. He was throwing people out of the way, mate. It was embarrassing. <laughs> like him and probably him or Danny Murphy, I'd say. Danny Murphy. When he was at Charlton. Yeah. yeah. He was top that, wasn't he? Oh, he was ridiculous. He, he's the same sort of thing like Andy Jury, isn't he? Yeah. Do things like passing and like, he was just, yeah, he was very good. And probably the hardest one I've played against, best player I've played against, probably Jonathan Woodgate. Woodgate, yeah. Yeah, probably Woodgate. Yeah. But he was yeah, coming he was at the end of the Just come back from Madrid as well, so it ain't a bad one, is it? No, exactly that, mate. I think, yeah, like I say, he was probably... If it weren't for injuries, I think he'd have, um, you know, he'd probably had an even better career in terms of how many games he'd have played and probably certainly how many games he'd have gone on to play for England. Uh, yeah, oh, superb. Right, next question. Wimbledon or Gillingham? <laughs> I don't know. Tough one for you, isn't it? Listen, I've I got I love for both of the clubs, but... Of course. It's I've got to go to Gillingham because so I live in Gillingham and a team that I've watched, watched since I was a little baby, do you know what I mean? So, nah, of course, of course, of course. So it's, 
But yeah, that's a very tough one, that mate, because they're yeah. very close. To <laughs> Listen, that's what I'm here for, mate. I'm sure they'll both be listening. And I'm, you ain't gonna lose no fans over that, mate. I um Listen, I know how much it meant to you because I was there when you joined Gillingham and, uh, you know, what, what a good servant you was for the club. Uh, certainly didn't let him down in any capacity. Right, what's my next one? I just turn the page. Yeah, for me, Kez, obviously, you've done it probably the hard way in the end, if you, if you like. You come through sort of non-league. I know you played at Welling and a few other clubs like that and then, Wim- and then obviously got promoted with Wimbledon. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier, another reason I want to do this is, is for younger players out there and, Particularly, you know, listen, there's, been, there's been other good examples. Look at Jamie Vardy. He's now playing in the Premier League and stuff like that. But uh, playing in the Premier League and stuff like that, coming through the hard way of non-league and stuff. So, for me, have you got any advice for sort of young strikers out there who, you know, they might not be uh, playing at the level that, you know, they want to be at the moment. But look at you. I mean, you, you work your way up and you end up playing, you know, a lot of League One uh, football. Uh, yeah, have you got any advice for these young players who, who are not at the level yeah. they want to be at the the reason, the reason why I started, like, obviously, um, because I always got set back by people for some reason. I had that thing on me that, oh, you can't do this or do that. But in my mindset, as I, as I was a kid, people used to say to me, you ain't going to make it. I used to make sure in my own head that I was going to make it and I used to tell them, trust me, I'm going to make it in the football league. Yeah. I'm going to be a professional footballer. Um, but that just come down to me in my own my own head. Whatever anyone says to you, don't listen to them. That's the, like people used to tell me, like like I say, you ain't good enough, or are oh, you like going out too much, or are you like that? And I'd be like, trust me, I'm gonna make it. Yeah, that was my mindset. Yeah, don't let anyone tell you you ain't gonna make it. The only the only person that's gonna make make you make it is yourself. Yeah, that's how I used to think all yeah. the time. Um, and obviously. When you do prove them wrong, it's even better when you see them down the street. Do you know what I mean? Of course. Yeah. Oh, do you mean you used to say I ain't good enough? Yeah. And they can't say nothing. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, cool. You can never, never stop believing in yourself. Yeah. That's the main thing. Like for young players, um, they're always going to be setbacks of getting released from clubs or yeah. not making in this certain club or blah blah blah. Do you know what I mean? I was at Sittingbourne as a kid at under 14s, 15s, and um, Steve Lovell. Um, I played two games and he was like, nah, not good enough. Yeah. I mean, so I got released at 14 at Sittingbourne. I went on trial at Gillingham at uh, 16, 17 under Heston title when he was in the championship. Scored scored hat trick on my on a reserve game, under 23 game, reserve game. I got told I wasn't good enough. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then five years later, he buys me. Yeah. Win with it. So that's the mentality I had and that's what people, young kids especially, um, just don't believe in, just believe in your own potential. Yeah. And you can do it yourself, don't listen to anyone else. No, it's great, mate. And I think, yeah, like you say as well there, I think, um, you know, I think, I, you know, even myself now, I do a bit of mentoring and, and, uh, and you know, coaching and stuff like that. And a lot of the lads, I think, um, for me, it's trying to make them realise that, you know, the margins are smaller than you think in football, you know. If you're not necessarily at a pro club now, it doesn't mean that you can't be in, you know, a year or so, six months' time, whenever it, whenever it may be. Everyone has, you know, it's, the, it's about timing with football. And for me, as well, like you say there, how quickly football can change. You know, you just said yourself, you, you got on trial to Gillingham when, you know, Hess was the manager originally in the Championship. For whatever reason, whether he didn't watch enough of the game, whatever it might have been, he didn't think he was ready. Then all of a sudden, you know, he's back at Gillingham as manager again five years later. And you know, you know, he's, he's, he's buying it from another club. So, you know, yeah. these kids ain't necessarily got to wait five years for things to change. Things can literally just change like really quickly in football. Oh, exactly. Look at look at Jamie Vada. We played um, Fleetwood in the semi final, the the uh, national conference national uh, semi final, and we played him away. He got dragged off after sixty minutes. Yeah. And then we played at home, at our place to replay, and he got dragged off again. Do you know what I mean? He was he was terrible. Yeah, he's exactly. nowhere near it. Now look at him. Yeah, so I mean, so it ain't never over. Like you just think, oh, that's him done. Because I I, I, the following year, he probably thought, Do you know what, I'm going to prove you wrong. Yeah, but himself, do you know what I mean? Dragging yeah. me off in semi-finals when I'm your top goal scorer. Do you know what I mean? So it, it ain't always over. Yeah, your time will always come, and yeah. when you when it does come, you just got to take it. 
got to take your opportunities. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just on, just on that as well for me, because I've got to be honest. Like when when I um when you first when you signed for Gillingham, like I obviously hadn't seen a lot of you and stuff and, and what have you. But when you when you turned up, it was like whoa, like what one you know what a player and two it was like you know how is this how have you not been playing you know already at this level if not higher you know when, when you turned up for me and you know for yourself as a centre forward do you think that like that that helped you coming through the non-league and stuff because you know it's, it's you know we, we all know what it's like it's rough and tumble you're probably coming up against you know big beasts of centre arse every single week so then by the time you probably come to Gillingham when we was in league two league one and stuff you would probably think you're probably the other way around you were probably bullying them you know yeah yeah it was, it was very weird yeah. um I I think I think a lot of clubs nowadays, like youth team clubs, um, especially like scholars and under twenty threes, I think it is best to get them out and play men's football in non league. Yeah. Um because like, obviously I played with players that have come straight out of academy level mm-hmm. and they've come in and obviously we've got one this year, junior, plays at Mill. Um and you can just tell that they ain't got that that bit of men mentality to yeah. do, drive on and go out, like just move on and kick on. Yeah. Um, because, listen, you know, when you're in a man's changing room. Yeah. For men's, like not thinking, not saying football league, I'm saying in non-league, non-league, changing yeah, room, just completely different because the professionalism ain't nowhere near as what it is in the football league. Yeah. Um, you get that different side of life in non-league um, which I found hard when I played um, yeah. do you know what I mean like having a game getting a bit of money and then you're in the bar spending it on beer yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean you're out all night yeah. do you know what I mean it's that different lifestyle of football yeah and then obviously when I went into Gillingham it was like good God what's going on here yeah. like, everyone's professional they're drinking these shakes they're doing all this <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm thinking, what are these fannies doing? Do you know what I mean? It's mad, though. It is, yeah, it's course. crazy. It's like, what are you doing all this for? And then until a couple of months in, I'm thinking, and I started, right, well, I'm a professional now. I've got to liven up and be like these pros. Yeah. Um, but I always had that, that non-league mentality in me on the football pitch. Yeah. And like you say, like, I can't remember anyone literally actually bullying me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no one at all is where, in the lower leagues, there used to be proper men out there who used to go to work, or, like, yeah, yeah. proper men just <laughs> throwing me about. And threw me about, about, so about just throwing me about the back of your head. <laughs> yeah, like, they'd bite me and punching me off the ball and things like yeah. that. And then, but I used to do that to people in the league, like, be horrible. No, um, that's what I'm saying, that was my people, point. I used yeah. to get in people's head. I used to get in yeah. people's head, like, and I used to think, mate, this is easier than non-league. But, footballing-wise, there's nowhere near it, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and I was, and that's the, Thing I like to adapt to. Yeah. It's like, God, oh, these are good players, mate, compared to what I've been playing with. That's so cool. I need to adapt. I like to change my game as well a bit, to be honest. Because yeah. I always used to be in behind player and hustling and bustling, which I do still do now at my age. But yeah, it, it, I actually changed my game very quick. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that I was fortunate enough that I could, could do that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, of course, like I say, and that's why just on the, on the striker side of it there, I feel like. You know, it's, it's 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 good for these young players to get out and experience, you know, proper football if you like, and uh, and take yeah. the knocks and kicks, and then but you know, then when they do come back to play for their clubs in in, in the league and stuff, I think it, it can only help you, you know. But right, yeah. last well, last question, a bit of fun before we go. Uh, hopefully, our younger strikers might be able to get up on the um, on YouTube if, if there's any coverage. What would, what would be your favourite goal if you could pick one? Let's pick one goal. Great. Right, one goal. Um... It's got to be the penalty at Man City, Etihad. For okay, women. yeah. Just because of the story behind it. Of Obviously, their club got taken away and it took them nine years to get back to the Football League. Yeah. Like I say, that one. And just because, like, yeah, like I say, you used the man to, uh, to get them back there. So, what, what, yeah, because that was, that was the, it was the um, the winning penalty, yeah, to take the uh, Wimbledon into the Football League. Football League, yeah. Back to the Football League, yeah. Yeah, I'd say that one. No, that's great, mate. That's fantastic. And like you I've say, got what... I've got got one each. Gilling my best club. That's <laughs> it. Yeah, you've even done that. One all. One Gilling one. one, one. one. We would have won. <laughs> 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 why was it? Why was it at the A? You had that year out of interest. 
because uh, of Man, uh, Man United Barcelona Champions League final. Okay, okay. At Wembley. Okay. They got changed, and I can remember the next day Peterborough and someone was playing at Man United's ground on the Sunday. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, I think I remember that now. Yeah, they they shared they yeah. shared them all out. Okay, cool. Good night yeah, out of Manchester good. after that as well. Uh, well, I can remember <laughs> it, bro, to be honest. <laughs> Mate, you, can't short, you, can't short, you can't live in short. You can't live in short with people buying you a drink, you know, can you? God, I can't remember it, mate. To be honest, <laughs> all I remember is waking up in the morning with a banging headache. <laughs> yeah, listen, that sounds about right, mate. But um, right, kids, top man, mate. Thanks very much no for your worries, time. Um, really, really appreciate you coming on. Like I say, I'm sure all the Gillingham and uh, Wimbledon fans would have uh, really enjoyed that. Listening to some stories and you know uh, some. Have some opinions on on the boys that you played with there, and then, like I say, also for our youngsters to uh to get some advice off you there at the end. So uh, thanks for that, yeah. mate. Take care, no worries, and mate. you know, don't let the boredom get the better of you. Yeah? No, yeah. Mate. sweet mate. Take, take, take care.